Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to the Do Not Listen to This Podcast. Um, so I'm here today with Zach, Olive, and Tyler. My name's Harold, by the way. Um, and we were sitting in a high school classroom about a week or two ago when this podcast idea was kind of conceived. Um, just listening to these guys have some really awesome conversations. So I'm going to turn it over to them to kind of tell you their perceptions on that and, and how that happened, what they were talking about, what we're thinking of, like kind of the direction we're going with this podcast. Cool. Uh, I'm Zach, and um, we, we were just hanging out, and we're just, we're just like three teenagers. Talking about anarcho-collectivism. Talking about whatever comes to our minds instead of doing work. And we actually had meaningful conversation instead of, you know, whatever. So we thought if we do a podcast, maybe we get a credits and we'll be actually doing work with our meaningful conversations. Yeah, and we can't stop talking, so we figured we might as well make something of it. Yeah, we just, <laughs> yeah, that's all we do. Um, so guys, I got a story. I got a tale. Um, Go on. It's a great story. It happened yesterday, so you know it's good. Ooh, so yesterday, I got, my, I got my driver's license. Um, I, 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 I was procrastinated. I'm 18 now. I was procrastinated because, uh, my like brother like really wanted it like right out of like 15, his permit, you know? Um, and my dad and my brother like beat heads. So I'm just like, well, you know, F this stuff, you know, I don't want it. So procrastinated, finally got it. Um, I got it. It, it was fine. You know, it went perfect. I was a little nervous going into it because, you know, I got there early and then the uh, driving instructor takes the first girl out. The first girl comes back bawling her eyes out. Mm-hmm. She's crying, and so Ooh. she didn't get it. Oh. And I'm like, That's okay. Now, is that I'm a like, guess, or do you know she didn't get it? She's just... bawling her eyes out when oh, she left okay. without it's taking a, happy a picture. Cry? No. Yeah, no, it was no, not no, a happy no, cry. No, no, definitely not. Definitely not. All right. Um, so I'm like, whatever. That's just that one girl. You know, then the next person goes out, comes back, doesn't get her picture taken, doesn't leave with a license. I'm like, oh, man, this guy is for real. Oh, I am no. not going to do this. Um, then the next guy comes out, uh, comes back, um, but I have to leave before I see if he gets it. So I'm going out and I'm a little, you know, a little nervous. The first thing he looks at is my, uh, my license plate. And yet, you know, that like black plastic thing, like around the license plate, that little plastic thing. Yep. He's like, you can't have that there. <laughs> yeah, I guess it like covered the green mountain, uh, state on the bottom. So I couldn't have it. And I'm like, oh, so yeah. you have to pull out a screwdriver. I know. I, <laughs> I didn't have a screwdriver. He's like, just rip it off. So I just had to break it off. <laughs> so I ripped it off. I'm off like, to a great start. Off to a great start. <laughs> um, I get him with the car, and he's like, all right, I want to test your e-brake. So I put the e-brake on, and then give it a little gas to see if it'll hold. I put it, uh, some gas, it jets right forward. Good. I'm like, son of a bitch. And he's like, don't worry, you're on ice, but it looks like it holds whatever. <laughs> so I'm going, I'm like, whoo, off to a great start. Uh, then I finished it. You know, I did it. I did it fine. Um, my parallel parking was on point. Nice. I was a little nervous because we had that big snowstorm. So there's giant piles of snow. So I kind of went, you know, up a little bit. <laughs> but I'm like, it's still there. It's just the snow bank. So I got it perfectly. Get my picture taken. Uh, drive home. Dad gets me on the insurance. Then I gotta go to community college. Uh, so I drive out to community college. You know, have my class. Then I'm in the parking lot leaving. And what is the one thing you? Don't want to happen on the day you get your license. Get in an accident yep. in the freaking parking lot. Yep. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. So I'm in the car. I'm backing up. I'm like halfway in the road. Well, the good and news then is, the, is it's a community college, so it couldn't have been an expensive car. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the teachers. Oh, oh, oh. Right, and I think she was like a big dude. She was like an administrator. No, start, oh. start faking whiplash or something. <laughs> was it one of your teachers there? It wasn't. It wasn't my teacher. Oh my god. <laughs> If I if I hit my deaf teacher's car, I feel so bad. Um, no, so I'm backing out, and then she backs right into my car. My car is fine, thank God, um, but her corner is all dented in. And you can imagine the conversation with my dad. Ring, ring, ring. Uh, hey, Dad, remember that conversation we had not two hours ago about, you know, I F that right up. <laughs> He's like, are you freaking serious? Um, so Tuesday was an eventful day for me. Um, yeah, yeah, no, that's, uh, sucks. that's my tail, that's my tail. Yeah, it's dude. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Oh my gosh. Yeah, dude. You, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> so, tell Olivia? So one oh, of the no. things that we're thinking about too is like, sharing some stories, they kind of tell what shaped us, not just like yeah. this week, but in our past. 
Would you want to elaborate on a little bit of a story, um, like kind of where you're going? Why are you at CCD? What kind of classes are you taking oh, totally. there? How are um, you getting there? You know, like. So I'm taking a sign language two at CCV. I took sign language one the semester before. It's like a wicked cool class. My teacher's deaf. So you can imagine that's... It's, so it's a, immersive. It's immersive, you know. <laughs> if you want to tell the teacher, I'm going to be out. You know, you got to try to sign it or write it down. Right, but do the kids not just goof off the entire class? Oh my gosh, it is the loudest class you will be in, my sign language class. Yeah, exactly. It is extremely loud. Um... It's so easy to cheat and fun to cheat because you're just kind of, you'll be like on the test and he'll be signing something up there and you'll just kind of turn your head and be like, what the f*** did you say? <laughs> you know? <laughs> not supposed to swear. That's all right. That's, that's uh, all right. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Um, Run it back. So I'm taking sign language because it was, you know, it's interesting. I've been going to a, a technical center for uh, two years. I started my junior year uh, studying child care. Um, which is really, really fun, really awesome. And I want to take sign language because you can teach toddlers sign language and they'll be able to, like, before they can talk, they can sign. So instead of them, like, flipping out because you don't know what they're saying, they can be like, milk, you know? Um, yeah, so I want to be something in childcare. I don't ever want to be a teacher because I hate, I hate school so much that, that I want to be, want to be in it. You know, want to be an educator because I've had such a, you know, bad time in it. That it's like that you uh, want to make a positive. That difference. I want to make a positive difference. I want to you know change somebody, make it suck a little less. That's awesome. Yeah, it's. I really wish. I wish you were my teacher. When I was yeah, me going too. Through high I, school. I really wish yeah. something yeah. came along a little sooner. I would hate to be a high school teacher. Everything I've learned, I've actually learned from you. Oh, so yeah. don't worry about it. You. <laughs> <are>. <laughs> oh, I've taught you so much. Yeah. It was like, funny. Um, I've got two young kids. Yeah. Uh, Rosie is my six-year-old. And we actually taught her sign language, so she could do that. She could get her needs met through sign language, like, yeah. milk, I'm thirsty, I have to go to the bathroom. You know, she knew all the, like, really basic signs. And she very rarely talked until she was probably three or four, like, because okay. she could just communicate just sign. and sign and get her needs, needs met that way. Um, we actually, like, took her to the pediatricians before, and she was like, the pediatrician there was like, crap, and this is the time that we stopped going to that pediatrician. Oh, sure. Because she was, like, questioning our parenting skills, like, oh, you guys should just read to her more. Like, she should yeah, be communicating and her talking so much uh -huh. more by now. And we were like, dude, we read to her, like, multiple books every day. She, like, just doesn't want to talk right now. Dude. It's okay. And, oh, yeah, and this lady was like, oh, no, this, this, and this, it's your fault, kind of, like, was yeah. the feeling we got. And I was like, it was crap. <laughs> I've seen plenty of kids... Because um, my mom works with Child Protective Services, I've seen plenty of kids that just weren't ready to talk. They just mm -hmm. waited it out, and then people were getting all nervous and stuff, worrying about it. And then a year later, they were fine talking. Everything was. Yeah, I, I'll wrong. be sitting in my class about child care, um, and they'll teach me all these things about how oh they should be able to do this at this point and this at this point. And then I'll go into the daycare center. I'm like, they're not doing any of this. And they'd be like, yeah, everybody's different. Yeah. You know, we have this like rough idea. And then they just be like, sometimes they just don't want to do it. Sometimes right. they just know. Yeah. You know, shouldn't they be walking right now? Be like, yeah, but they'll probably get to it. Yeah. They'll get to it. You know? I mean, that's how I am most certainly as a teenager. I'll yeah. probably do it. Eventually. I'll probably do it. Oh, yeah, Isn't Tyler it. supposed to be here? You'll get to it. Yeah, yeah. I'll be, I'll, you'll probably be late. Or maybe. I've been saying I'll get to it for the last four years of high school. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. I'll get to it. We'll see. It'll yeah, we'll see so when we graduate. That does transition to an awesome story that I think you were going to share, Olive, about kind of your school and your experience totally. there. Yeah. Because you've had a little bit of a different journey than some of us. I, for the first couple years of my life, before I started going to public school, I went to a Waldorf school, cool. which is like a, an educational philosophy. Do you, yeah, do you know I, who, like... Somebody Waldorf. I mean, that's his last I name. Think, I think it's... I, Rudolf? It's Rudolf? Rudolf. Rudolf. <laughs> Rudolf. I don't know. Steiner. Edu Adam. So, yeah. Uh, well, I have it. So, it's, yeah, it's Rudolf Steiner. Um, oh, Steiner is Waldorf? Yeah, Steiner? basically, it's, it's integrating... Um, like nature and yeah. morality into yeah. like early childhood development. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot about imagination. So a lot of what we did there, we would like sing songs and bake bread, uh, yeah. which I still do every day of my life. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and most of class was in the woods. Uh, there was like a magical forest. 
think it was called the magical forest. There wasn't, you know, because what else do you have to do? Yeah, what else are you going to call it? It's pretty straightforward, yeah. This is a carnivorous forest. No, this no. is the magical it forest. It was the magical guys. forest, and it, it definitely was. There were crazy creatures out there. <laughs> like, it was it was <laughs> When I was wild. three, I've seen some I have seen, magical I swear, forest. yeah. Um, it was crazy, um, and I think that that was pretty much the entire reason that I am the way that I am now because I it, it was like a big part she's of messed up. the first you, couple you, you know, yeah like the, no the first years of my person. life though I was learning immediately about nature and morals and pretty much just like yeah that is definitely like a school I would love to be a teacher yeah at. it was like really cool. I, I want to be a teacher and I love kids and I love working with them but I feel like I'd hate being at a public school. I feel like it would suck so right. much. When I it's started going to public like, school, it was so different. Like, I, yeah. I felt really weird. Um, yeah, the Waldorf school uh, was pretty cool. There was this... We used to have this festival every year, and it was called the May Pole Festival. And in May, there would be this pole this we would pole. have. We would make, like, crazy, like, ribbons, and we would all walk around it, and we would wrap the pole... And I regretfully don't actually know what the festival was for. I'm sure it's something really cool. Uh, I don't really know that. But my dad, who at the time was in culinary school, he thought that it was the maple festival, like maple sugar. Uh. So he made all of these, like, beautiful maple candies and, like, all of this stuff. And he brought them to share. And he was wrong in it. It was, was wrong. It was a bummer. Maple, he was totally not maple. wrong. It's hey, candy. How wrong can you be? That's very much a an Andrew check move. Okay, well, I mean, for the Maypole festival, what what foods do you bring? Do you like lollipops? Because no it's got idea. A, you know, like a, like a it's usually associated cake. with May Day, by the way. Okay, you pulled it up. All right. I hate that band. Um, oh, May Day. May Day. Yeah. Maple. So the yeah, Waldorf exactly. school yeah, was was lot. pretty cool. It was in. It's near Jeffersonville, Vermont. I actually don't know what town it was yeah. in, and it's closed now. It was in a. It's closed. It was in a one a one room, like little, schoolhouse. Yeah. Um, yeah. They shut down. Um, but it was cool. It was good. Yeah, dude. It was super magical. Super magical. It was super witchy. Was super everything was very. Everything was very. Everything witchy. was very pagan. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. I did a lot of baking and a lot of singing and a lot of spells. 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 Yeah, for sure. Ooh. Olivia, are you in the wizard? forest? You heard it first here. You heard it first. <laughs> know, we have found a way to take it. Olive's a witch. Olive. That's, you heard that's, it first. It's kind of, yeah. <laughs> I would, I would, I would, I would say well, yes. I, yeah. mean, I, I mean, medicinally. Uh, maybe medicinally. not as much spiritually, but medicinally, I would say so. For sure. <laughs> well, luckily enough for you in this day and age, you don't got to worry about fire. That's true. Doing a little better with that. We did, We are. It's true. I, we're not. I have we're never not burning been, as much witches. I've never been tarred. You know, feather. people can complain all they want, yeah. but in this day and age, you know, witches have a lot more <laughs> freedom. <laughs> Which we actually have a very we see large them as Wiccan equals. section no. in our library here. Dude, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We see them as equal now. One of our librarians, really, like, like you can bag on Trump all you want, but at least yeah. we have that. The head librarian used to be an herbalist here. So oh, really? I actually wow. didn't know that. Oh yeah, I've met quite a few. Herbalists. My, I'm, I'm having a terrible time right now. All of really? my herbs are, they're losing it. It's winter. Mm. Yeah, I had to move yeah. my garden inside, and it just didn't do well. Mm. Spring soon though. That never does well. It's always like a good idea at the time, and then it just, yeah. I mean, I, I pretty much I try to harvest gardens everything. Gardens in general, in, especially in my family, just don't work. Like my mom at the beginning <laughs> of the summer is like so into it. She's like, I got my garden, I've weeded it, put all the plants in, and then we're like two weeks into summer, be like, anybody water that thing? I was like, Nah, I'll get to it. I'll you do it tomorrow. Have me come over. I'll hang out with your garden. <laughs> okay, I'll hang out with your garden. Hang out with yeah. my garden. Our rosemary is about the only thing doing well inside. I think your your daughter or the no, the, the plants the plant <laughs> in the herb garden. That's good. So, Tyler, do you have a story that you wanted to share? A story a defining tale. me as a person or a tale of my schooling. Which it's just any how it, just a story that's affected you and your growth as an individual. I like you would talk about like climbing a mountain you a little bit. You know, like, you know? Oh, all right, yeah, yeah. I'll tell the mountain story. Uh, definitely <laughs> gives people a good idea about who I am as a person. Um, do they want to know that? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> well, 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 not really. We told you not well, to listen to it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This, this is a forewarned, forewarned. podcast. All right. Um, 
so me and a bunch of my friends, we really like hiking. You know, we we love backwoods Vermont, love everything You're about Vermont, it. Dude. Yeah. yeah, I'm a Vermont. I mean, I hate winter, but <laughs> just, but like Vermont in the summer, amazing. Oh. All right, gotta love it. So we were like, we're gonna hike this mountain, and we're gonna go stay up in a cabin that somebody just put at the top of the mountain for some reason. Yeah, dude. And um, Super fun. right next to a pond. It's gorgeous, by the way. Um, it's called Sterling Mountain, and we made plans for this. Everything was set up. My friends were going to come pick me up. We were going to go. I was going to have everything packed, and my mom in the morning comes and wakes me up, and I'm all right, and that, you know, that, that upset me. Don't, <laughs> that's, don't wake me up. That's your first mistake. I got to go yeah, hiking today. not don't a good wake idea. Me up. She goes, come on, we're going to the dentist today, and I was like, excuse me? What, <laughs> um, and she's like, yeah, yeah, you're getting those four teeth pulled, and I was like, oh, so that's happening. Oh, um, no. I didn't. I was like, nope. Uh, Do you still have those? Can I have those? My <laughs> the teeth. Your teeth. I want to. Like, I didn't keep my teeth. No. Well. <laughs> Anyways, all uh, witchcraft oh, aside, uh, <laughs> I so I had to go get these four teeth pulled. Long story short, um, you know, I was naturally a little nervous about it. You know, getting four teeth like adult teeth like surgically removed from my face it's rough and i was like and i gotta go hiking later and <coughs> so i told my friends maybe we maybe, maybe push it off a little late and they were like oh we can't because this is when we get out everyone's going up and i was like all right whatever and i went and they pumped me full of whatever drugs make my i got the laughing <laughs> gas i got some something else i mean you know you've seen all those videos on facebook where they Get a bunch of uh, teeth pulled and they're all the like wisdom teeth and they don't know they don't know what's going on. Yeah, they did. Uh, they did that, and then I was like, of course I hadn't packed yet because I had to get up and go to the dentist. And I, my mom brought me home and I was still like, all loopy and like, like just grunting instead of speaking. <laughs> and so I packed my bag and I went to leave, and I looked over at my wall and I saw my sword, just kind of. You know, on my wall, because I'm super into swords, I'm a fencer, I love it, you know, I'm a total geek. And I was like, you know, I'm probably going to need that. And like, <laughs> in my mind, I was like, I really, I'm, I'm really going to need that on this mountain. If you've been like, in the backwoods of Vermont, you exactly, know. Exactly, I'm like, am I going to have sword. exactly, am I going to have to kill a mountain boar or something like that? You know, you never know. And <laughs> so I grabbed my sword. And I was like, this is a good idea. No other, like, repercussions were in my mind at all. Um, especially not the one where I couldn't fit it in my bag and I had to wear it on my back and hike a mountain with it with several other people. And I was like, packing my bag and like a zombie. And I also look over and I was like, hey, look, my bathrobe. You That's <laughs> awesome. I, I'm going to want to wear that when I go to bed up on a mountain because it's going to be uncomfortable. So yeah. I go to try to put it in my bag, and it doesn't fit in my bag. And I was like, oh, that's easy. I'll just wear it. <laughs> <laughs> so I put on a bathrobe, and I strap a sword to my back. And I, Wait, I need to complete the picture. What color is the bathrobe? The bathrobe is dark blue. Dark blue. <laughs> dark blue, just like thick. Thick winter bathroom. <laughs> winter bathroom. All right, and I was like, rrr, rrr. And my friend comes and picks me up, and he says some stuff to me, and I respond with, rrr, rrr, rrr. And he's like, "You all right, buddy?" And I'm like, rrr. And "He brings me up to the, we go up to the foot of the mountain, and I get out, and he was like, what is wrong with you?' Like looking at me, like, what's the matter with you?' And I was climbing up, and everyone's like, "Oh, this is so heavy." Uh, everyone's like complaining about stuff, and I was just carrying everything, and I was like. Guys, I'm a mountain. <laughs> and they were like, excuse me? And they were like, yeah, this is easy, all right? Like, And for some reason, I didn't feel the, like, restriction, like, of I'm tired, I need to sit down. I don't know why. So <laughs> my friends were like, all right, got a kid in a bathrobe, <laughs> sweating, probably probably very dehydrated, yeah. um, with a sword on his back. <laughs> Uh, this was a very public trail, by the way. There was a lot of people walking <laughs> oh, yeah, past me. They're looking at me like, trip. what's the matter with you? And my face is like, oh, uh, <laughs> like, drooped down. Like high school I'm, kids. Like, they're staring at me, and I'm, like, grunting at them. Like, <laughs> and so uh, everyone's like, well, this kid clearly knows what he's doing, all my friends. And they were like, so let's just strap all of our bags to him. Oh, so, and of course, like, I couldn't, my brain wasn't quite working the way it should have been. <laughs> 
because of like all the laughing gas and all that stuff that was like I got in you know, like half an hour ago. Oh my god! And so they were like, I was like, sure, dude, no, no problem, Whoa. right? Like I am the mountain. <laughs> I'm a machine. All right, I don't need anything. I am the mountain. Okay. And so they strap like a bag over my neck and another one over my back. I got like three duffel bags on me. I'm in a bathrobe. I got a sword on my back and. I was, like, ready, thinking I was going to need to take this sword out at any minute to ensure my friend's survival, all right? I needed it. Because if another kid in a bathrobe came out of the bathroom, that would have been insane. Would, if I, if I needed to challenge somebody to do a duel, all right, I could have. Oh all right, if I needed that to duel Aaron somebody. Burr over here. And um, so we're climbing the mountain, and I just kept going. Like, everyone's just sitting down. I'm just trucking along like it's nothing. And I finally make it to the top. And I just fall over, and I'm like, <gasps> and I drank like half of our water supply, <laughs> naturally. And we're at the top of the mountain and everything, and I realized everything that I've done up until this point, and I'm like, what is the matter with me? Like, yeah. And I'm like coming back to like, I'm a human being with responsibility, <laughs> and like, what's wrong with me? Like, why can't I think for myself? If you can imagine, Tyler is a twig. Oh, so yeah. So all very of this skinny. He is... Very skinny. There's nothing to Tyler. There was more weight on me than weight in my body. Definitely. And I... Yeah. We made it up there, and next thing I know, there's a storm hit. I, we didn't plan this at all. Storm hits, and we're in a... And we go to the cabin. It's full. There's a party oh, yeah. that booked it already. So we're like... All right, we're going to have to walk another huge distance because there's a lean-to there. And we make it, and we go and stay the night in the lean-to, and... Oh, God, was I tired. Very, very tired, and yeah. I remember... But you were still in a bathrobe with a sword, and there's lightning. Well, yeah, no, I went. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Somehow you lived to tell the for tale. Sure. I was swinging it around <laughs> out in the dark. Like, I could see everything. Oh, yeah, for sure. And um, I remember in the middle of the night, this guy comes over to us. And in the lean to or whatever, and he's like, do you guys want some, like, peanut butter? And we were like, what? <laughs> what did you say? Like, I was befuddled. And he was like, you guys want to, like, trade? And, like, that's what mountain people do. They just like, trade provisions. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, sure. So we traded him some, like, bread for some peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know why we had, like, four pieces of bread with us. No just idea four? why. four? Yeah. No, it was like. Oh, How many like, people were there? Uh, one, two, three, four, like four or five. <laughs> okay, five. so you're gonna yeah. you're gonna split four pieces of bread five ways. Five, yeah. Maybe Somebody six. is getting so much crust. And <laughs> like Somebody ate a slice worth of crust. <laughs> one of my friends just ate all the bread basically himself. Yeah, and that friend was that was me. We sustained, <laughs> and I remember that night taking the gallon of water, and I was like, "Gosh, we have a lot of water. We could like." Be- and we, I was thinking about how we were just trading with everyone. Like, we were trading the peanut trading. butter and stuff. And I was like, we could, like, start a water business up here. Like, people need water and stuff like that. And I accidentally knocked over a gallon of water. <laughs> <laughs> the last remaining half gallon of water we had for the next night and a half plus walking down. And everyone looked at me like they were going to murder me. And but I you was had like, the sword. Yeah, and I was like, but I had the sword, so I knew I was fine. And I was like, <laughs> you got to spend money to make money. <laughs> and nobody wanted to talk to me the rest of the night. And we ended up sustaining life by drinking water from a stream and cooking thaw- overthawed Eggo waffles on a stick Ooh. over a fire. Man, was it gross. Yeah. Not Why wouldn't good. you just eat the thawed waffles? <laughs> it's really not that bad. Well, we wanted them crispy. <laughs> Like at the time, it was a good I idea. Smoked at the time, smoked smoked egg egg the other option was <laughs> pond water ramen noodles because we were out of water. So we went with Eggos. I would have taken the ramen. Did you at least boil the water before you were drinking it? Well, no. <laughs> but you're well, doing this. Done that. It's <laughs> it's had access to no, it. no, that's not it's, how it works. <laughs> moss is a natural filter. Right? <laughs> and moss, but just going over moss doesn't filter. <laughs> It filters it enough. It's a, if it's a moving stream, I mean, no, you're you can, totally you fine. You can drink from a stream. You just can't drink. You could have boiled it. You know that you could have. I definitely could have. However, again, it doesn't I'm take on a lot of Boy Scout <laughs> over here. Uh, no, I had idea. I just hiked a mountain in a bathroom with a sword. You think I'm thinking about? Oh man, I really should watch out what I drink. No, I'm thinking. I'm dying of heat exhaustion because I wore a bathroom up a mountain. Yeah. And I need water. A winter okay. bathroom. And, um, 
Yeah, it's me and my stupidity that's, for you. That's tea in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fine. man. So one of the stories I wanted to share about just, like, kind of how, I guess, my life has shaped and developed is that, like, pretty shortly after I graduated high school, um, I was... So I graduated in 2001, so I was kind of kicking it back, but that was, you know, the year of, like, 9-11 happened that year and everything, like, as I started college. Um, Pretty shortly after that, it was actually 2003, so... Um, in, in the spring of 2003, and it was on Easter Sunday, um, I had a friend that I had gone to high school with. His name was Nate Brown. He was just an awesome guy. He was a nerd, hung out with my friend Rob and I a lot. We always played all sorts of, you know, the, the nerdy games, like Seventh Sea and Magic oh, and Role Playing, all sorts of, you know, they, they were more into, like, the Warhammer and stuff. But he was an amazing guy. He was a musician, just hung out, zany kid. Um, and he really wanted to, like make his life better. He wanted to go into the, um, basically ended up going into the armed forces, um, because he was like, oh man, I don't have any other way to get into college. I want to, you know, be able to make something of my life, be able to change where I am now, be able to, you know, become a better person, learn, grow. So he wanted to, to do the college program through the armed forces. Um, so he tried to do that and he ended up getting killed over, um, I think it was Iraq um, at that point, and he got hit by some shrapnel over there, and it was Easter Sunday that he ended up passing away. Mm-hmm. And I just remember, like, you know, my friend Rob and I, who I'm still friends with to this day, and he, he lives up here now in Vermont also, um, but getting that news, and we're like, oh my gosh, this this is horrible. This is, like, that sense of immortality that you have as, like, a, a young person, as, as a teenager a lot, you know, like, where I used to go and jump off of roofs and do really stupid things, you know, because it's like, oh, really I'm bad immortal, whatever. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, That sense of immortality was just, like, yanked from us. And it's like, oh, my gosh, this is incredible, this and is this real. is horrible, and why are we even fighting this war? You know, like, those types of questions coming up. And, and I think that was the point in my life where I really, because I had actually gone to some pool meetings with him in high school and stuff because he was interested in going down that pathway at that point. Um, and I think Rob and I had both gone to a couple of those like meetings and we're like, oh, this is kind of cool, you know, where they're kind of pulling the high school kids in and um, <clears throat> getting them prepared to go into the armed forces. And I ended up actually, like my dad had talked me out of it kind of last minute. Like, I was talking to recruiters and stuff even mm-hmm. that summer of 2001, so right before it turned September, you know, like, yeah. like into August, still making this decision and meeting with recruiters. And I was looking at recruiters from the Marines specifically even, like... And, you know, my dad was able to talk some sense, and he was like, A, why would you want a job that you can't ever leave, you know, like, that you can't leave right away? Um, and, like just kind of thinking about those deeper things, like, what if something were to happen? And then, you know, the next month that 9-11 happened and mm-hmm. crap kind of hit the fan and it went all crazy. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much, Dad. But but going through that process and then getting that news was like, wow. I That was when I kind of become became a pacifist and was like, all right, this, you know, why are we doing these things? Why do we fight? Why do we kill each other to solve our problems? This is kind of a ridiculous way, like... Um, there's a guy named Pete Rollins, and he has this really cool quote, and I'm going to butcher the quote, but the essence of it is, like, that war is not conflict, it's the absence of the ability to deal with conflict. Sure, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And so that that kind of started to direct my life, and, like, just realizing that, you know, like, the war and the violence and the fighting and stuff isn't what's going to make things better. Like, being a caring and loving individual and, like, actually connecting with fellow human beings is what's going to make the world a better place. And um, that kind of steered me into... I think at that point I still had no idea what the heck I wanted to do. You know, I was at community college. I did four years at a two-year program to just get through and to be considered full-time and get the tax breaks and stuff while I was working full-time to get through that. Um, But, yeah, that was kind of when I was like, okay, I need to get into education. I need to, like work with people I want to you know thinking back in my own high school career like like my teacher Mrs. Skelly was the one that I always look back at she was my 11th grade English teacher and she's just like so engaging and so drawing us into those deeper questions and so I think I'd look back at that too 
and I look at this now and you guys here and like engaging in those deeper meaningful conversations you know as, as we do this podcast project kind of started as a joke and this funny thing yeah, that just kind totally. of spewed out of you guys having conversation but it's like this really cool thing like where we can use this time to be like hey let's let's look at some deep issues and let's talk about them you know because like that first conversation you guys are having you know about anarchy and stuff and you're all from like different paths in life but you're all like talking about these differing opinions in really respectable ways and like engaging each other in a conversation and that is what's going to change the world you know like little things like that having being able to hear other people and respect other people and engage with people who are different than you is what's going to change the world yeah and that's good to see in the next generation of people you know that are going to be running into these problems a lot in these situations where people are not going to agree and people might butt heads but it's always easier and way better to just hear out someone else's opinion and share your own you know, who knows you might change their thought they might change yours and hopefully both of you grow through that process yeah yeah i think it's it's sure. nice that you see that you know in the next generation because i think it's so easy to be like the next generation is so awful you know mm. they're doing all these stuff they're privileged they're you know they never go outside um but seeing that there are you know good people and not focusing on the bad stuff when all that stuff happened you know there's a time where you're definitely like oh this is you know you know, F this, F that, um, but coming out of it with this positive outlook and being like, oh, yeah. that could be hope. And you know? I'm sure you guys know, like, even this last political cycle has been really hard in that. It's been very, like, you have a different opinion than yeah. mine, so it doesn't count. You know, you Insane. discount the other person. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. less than you. I mean, Politics are just a crap storm right now. Yeah, but ultimately, I mean, the was, only that way... That was the first, you know, election we were really you know, old enough to understand right. and be into, and it was this insane one. Yeah. You know? I think ultimately the only way uh, for people to learn, though, is to have some sort of social conflict that they t- take part in. Um, because if you're surrounded by people who always have the same opinion as you, your thoughts won't grow. Yeah. Right. I think you have to have a disagreement. It's like the social bubble syndrome. Right, yeah. 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 Hive mind is never the way to go. Yeah. So we're, you know, as we move forward with this podcast, we're going to be tackling some deep issues. You know, we're going to, we're going to not skirt away from things. We're going to do it with tact and we're going to have conversations with humor because we're all kind of funny, humorous people. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's our own personal opinions of ourselves. You, you can judge whether we're you funny or not, but we're, we're going to be laughing about it. And that's <laughs> what really matters. And we hope you join in. Um, Wild card. <laughs> But we're, we're going to have some deep conversations here. We're going to be talking about things like government. We're going to be talking about things like school and what it is and what it should be. Things like gender and stereotypes and beauty, religion. You know, like there, There's a lot of paths, I think, that lay open uh, before us. And we're going to be you know, talking from our own perspectives, which are four white people sitting in a room. Three of us are teenagers. It's- um, and just going from there, yeah. And there's absolutely going to be no intention of putting anyone or any group of people down. It's it's going to be productive conversation that's meaningful and supportive of everyone. Also, count Nazis. Groups. Oh yeah, <laughs> but except Nazis. Yeah, we, we, except we'll, Nazis we can put down Nazis. And, yeah, I think. Okay, okay, we're just as a, if you're, as a if fundamental you're out there listening idea. You're a Nazi, we'll, we'll, you're just we'll give the hate rate right back yeah. to you guys. Yeah, you guys are. That's yeah. like a really big. We're not going to try to offend but anybody, but we're on gonna, a base level, if it makes sense, we're not going to try not to offend anybody. <laughs> we're not going to hold back. If you get really we're gonna offended be by small things in the world, um, there's no amount of time you can spend in this world where you're not going to get hurt by people saying things. So the part you can change, because you can't change how everyone talks, you can change how you deal with it. And, of course, there are situations where people should not be saying what they're saying or doing what they're doing, but, you know, it's you can't just make people not be or do bad things, which is rough. But, mm. fortunately, it's something you got to deal with in a world full of flawed human beings, you know? Yeah. I, I always like to think that... Um, we have a sword. 
No, nobody <laughs> nobody ever. Should Two of us at this table have yeah, swords. Yeah. Yeah. Sword. Yeah. <laughs> we should bring our swords in for the next podcast. Just That's true. It's just <laughs> a bunch of clanking the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> clink, clink, clink. Like, you guys won't be able to see him, but the ambiance of weaponry in the room will be nice. Yeah. We can slay Nazis. Exactly. exactly. On, on air. That's on air, nice. do you think? Nice. And KKK members. Those are the and, only yep. two groups that we're going to marginalize, right? Right. I That's think true. I think we could probably come up with more, we're, but for now, those are the two. The, those, those are the prominent, the prominent <laughs> guys that we... Uh, yeah, just... <laughs> that we're interested in just, using swords with. Yeah, yeah, we just... We, we, you know, combined with all of us, we, it's one t- we're not going to agree on much, but we can agree on that they're terrible. I could pull some yeah, we're all, that's <laughs> bond or, or the, that there are yeah. people who subscribe to terrible ideologies. Yeah, that's true. Correct. No, that's true. I, I, I honestly believe nobody, <clears throat> nobody's a bad person. Nobody wants to be the villain in their story. If we right. think, mm-hmm. it, if, well, they think my, they're in, good people. They, they think they're good people. In my life, I'm the protagonist in the story. You're all Everybody's side characters. I have my own journey. I'm going on. Everybody's the. Right. protagonist. And you always got to think about, you know, how many of these neo-Nazis or KKK members were are that today because of their parents oh, or influences in their life. Something you know? yeah. happened. Or the They're place trying that you grow to up. Yeah. like yeah, it's not a good ideology to have, but parents are powerful. They can mm. mold a human being for the yeah. rest of their life. You know, and that's why teachers and parents are so important like I know so you should be a teacher. that I was totally yeah. fine with, like, being an immature loser. And then, like, <laughs> I witnessed some, like, positive role models that were adults. And I now often think to myself, like, you know, I want to be a mature, positive individual, you know, that does something or is positive to the world in some way. And make a sweet awesome. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> or make a sweet <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah, boy, insert sound effects there. Wacky <laughs> the, sound the horns. <laughs> <laughs> Air horns. Coming back to the sword thing. Uh, Ooh, what, sword Zach, mace. what is your weapon of choice? Because these two have swords. I'm oh, going I'm I'm to pull out witchcraft. I'm going to have a mace, right? Oh, okay. you need a mace or a flail? The, the one on the chain? That's a flail. A, a flail. flail. That's what I want, a flail. You want a flail? So no. Tyler and I both actually study historic European martial arts, and you know the main weapon there that kind of... the community focuses on his long sword. Right. It's none of that, so it's none that wimpy epe stuff. All right. We we go. We beat each other. So are we also margin, marginalizing fencers? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, 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 can do that. I can do that because I am a fencer. Okay. I have used it, you know, an epe. Okay. Right. But my weapon, of sword, my weapon of choice is the dagger. Okay. The dagger. Yeah, that's the dagger. true. That's so, true. Just throw I, that What's I, yours? I'm the long sword. The long sword. I like, witchcraft yeah, I definitely like Actually, big I'm not really into, like, combative witchcraft. I, 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 I would disagree with that, actually. I can't say, no, I can't say that my... Oh, come on. I, I really, I don't know if that's necessarily if, if you weapon. stumbled upon, oh, there's, you know. I guess if I found a Nazi, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Walking down the street, oh, is that, oh, hey. I is. feel like my herbs are not really... Magic a, a, missile. <laughs> yeah. I think fireball, I heard, fireball. I saw a sign the other, well, it was online, um... It was at a protest, and it was very me. It said, I came here to knit hats and punch Nazis, and I'm all out of yard. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh my so we never actually talked about, um, do we have a sign-off catchphrase or anything? Ooh, Ooh that's good. Um, <laughs> a sign-off catchphrase. Sign up cash for us. So that's pretty much us in the podcast in a nutshell. We hope that you'll continue to join us and kind of come along on this journey with us. Um, if you didn't actually listen to the title of the podcast, which was Do Not Listen Do to not This listen Podcast. To right. um, We're only going to get weirder, I promise. It, it, it only gets worse from here. <laughs> yeah, so super mellow. Super <laughs> mellow. Did we also mention uh, Zach's a ginger and... Oh yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm a ginger. So if you can marginalize fences because you are one, I'm gonna marginalize like daywalkers. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Exactly. Yeah, I can't be marginalized because I'm superior. Whoa. <laughs> Gingers are superior <laughs> than. Yeah, that's uh, not true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's not true. I am this. Yeah, we should stop. So so don't awful. listen. To this. We don't have a catchphrase yet, but we <laughs> might next time. We'll, we'll end Thanks it with a zing me. for now. Thanks for watching. Zing! Zing. Zing. <laughs> I, I didn't participate in the thing. <laughs>